Okay, everyone, this is day four of our surface area experiment. Okay, so what you need to do is go back into your assignment and um, you'll be looking at this chart. Okay, so remember that on this chart we ranked the openings of our containers based on what we have at home. Um, some of us have different containers from one another, so we may get different results. So, but you should have already ranked these. So today what we're going to do is we are going to um, measure out the remaining water in our experiment and then we will fill out this chart. We have three rows to fill out. We will also then at the end analyze our results and answer the following questions on this slide. It's step seven. And then I've added some reading for you to do at the end that talks about water vapor and evaporation. And then you'll have a few questions on the last slide to um, answer. Okay, so that's what's happening here. So remember at the beginning, we started out with 20 milliliters. Um, so now what I'm going to do is look at our experiment. So the first thing I want you to do is make sure that you have a couple of materials. Um, just so that way you can quickly um, keep track of your measurements, I want you to get a piece of paper and just write out the different containers that you have. So you should have four different containers. So I just wrote out what I have, okay? And the next thing that you're going to need is you're going to need your syringe and you will need your container to put water in after we take it out of each of these containers. So you need an extra container to put water into after we take them out of here. All right, so this is how we do it. So for the first one, you can choose whichever container you want. Um, we actually, I would start with, I wouldn't start with this one yet. Let's leave this to later. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my flat lid. Okay, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but like literally for my flat lid, there's nothing left. Okay, so we are going to write down what's left. For this one, I mean, maybe there's like a tiny little, little, little smidgen of water, but that's gonna, I can't even, I can't even measure that. So basically, there's nothing left for mine. So what I'm gonna write down for my flat lid is I had zero milliliters, okay? Zero milliliters. Now, if you did have something in your flat lid, because some of you have a smaller flat lid, so you may have something in yours, you're gonna take your syringe and you're gonna use your syringe to measure, okay? I feel like I have a little bit of water in here. I'm gonna try to get all that water out before I start, okay? So if I had something in here, I would literally, just go around and use the syringe to try to pick up what's ever in there, okay? So you're using the syringe to measure. Now in mine, um, I don't have anything, so I can't really show you how that works, but I will show you for the other containers and you will get the point. All right, so I'm gonna put that one to the side. So I have zero for mine. You may have something. You're doing this based on your results. All right, I'm gonna do the dome lid next. Um, and in the dome lid, you can see that there is some water. You guys need to be very careful with these containers. It's very easy to just hit them and then they spill. Um, okay, I do have some water left in there. Now what I'm gonna do with this syringe, again, I want to push the plunger all the way down before I start um, sucking up the water, okay? Because this is how we're gonna measure it. If you see here, there's already measurements on um, the syringe. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, and as we did this before, I'm going to do it straight up. I'm going to hold it straight up, and maybe I need to um, tilt that a little bit so I can make sure I get everything. And hey, there's nothing left. I got it all up. If you're like, I didn't get everything, then just keep pulling it up. And if you get to the end, don't pull the plunger out. If you get to the end and you still notice, but there's water in there, you're gonna to have to start over. You're gonna to have to put all the water back in and start over and try again. Now, when I look at this, okay, I wanna keep it like this and try to look at the measurement upside down. 
So when I look at this, it's five, six, seven, eight. I don't know if you guys can see that. I have, I'm trying to show it to you, eight milliliters left in the dome lid. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down before I forget. I have eight milliliters left in the dome lid. So you'll see, I wrote that down, eight milliliters left. All right, so now I need to get rid of this water because I need to measure the next one. So I'm just going to put the plunger all the way down, get all the water out. I would tap it because there's a little bit of water left in there in that tip. Okay, great. I've done two so far. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is my Dixie cup or the beaker. Some of you guys have the other smaller container, so you're gonna use that. All right, so here we go. I'm going to, again, keep it straight up, and I'm just going to lift the plunger up until I get all the water out of there. And I know that you guys can't see what's going on in my cup, but I got all the water out of there. If that Again, if that doesn't work, then just put it all the water back in, push the plunger down, and try it again to make sure that you get every bit of water out of there as best you can. I mean, if you have a couple of drops, it's gonna be okay. Okay, but you don't want a whole bunch of water left in there. And mine is pretty much, there's like a couple of drops, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put it right here. And then again, um, I'm going to show you that this one has a lot. I wonder why. I mean, if I kind of look at it, if I show you these, because I know if you're looking at these, look at this, my flat lid is huge. It has a huge surface area. There was nothing left. My dome lid is a little bit smaller than that, and it had eight milliliters left. This one, if I even if I put them, I know you can't see that, like this, you'll see that this um, opening is also a lot smaller, and I have 16 milliliters left. So I'm going to write that down for my beaker or my Dixie cup. I have 16 milliliters left. So let's just keep track of it there. Now I'm going to take the syringe and I'm going to get rid of that water. Now with this tube, I'm going to show you. Hold on to it. This, oh, it does fit. I wasn't sure if this would fit in here. So we're gonna try it. Okay, I'm gonna put this back in here and hold it up. I'm gonna hold everything up. I'm gonna try to see if I can get all of this water out. I'm just gonna keep inching it down. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get all of it out. So I couldn't get all of it out. There's still some. So instead of doing that, I know you guys are gonna to wanna to do that. Woo, I just spilled a little bit. So you gotta be careful. So instead, I have this big cup. I know some of you guys taped this down, so you need to get rid of the tape. I'm going to pour this water in here, so that way it is easier for me to get the water out. Remember, I'm gonna do it straight up. Keep going, keep going. And there's a couple of drops left, but it's going to be okay because it's not that much. Now remember, if I were to show you this again, look at the surface area. Look at the opening is much smaller and look at how much water I still have. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's about 18, 18 milliliters. Okay. And there's a little bit more in there. So I'm going to write that down 18 milliliters. Okay. So that's 18 milliliters left. Okay, and your results might be different than mine. I did notice that, you know, I had mine right back here behind me, but I also have a heating vent on the floor. So I don't know, like with my heater going on and off, if that helped with the evaporation at all. You're, you might have different results depending on how warm or um, how cold it is in your house and like, you know, moisture and things like that in the air. This is what I need to put into my... Um, Google slide document now. So again, remember what we did was we just measured all of the water. Again, in your flat lid, it was smaller. Most of yours is smaller than mine. So you may have had some water in there. So it may not be zero. So you're not using my results. You're using your results, but I am going to show you how that works 
in my own Google document. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put that in here. This is what you're gonna do. So at the end, how much did I have in the graduated cylinder? I had 18 milliliters. How much did I have in the beaker? I had 16 milliliters. How much did I have in my dome lid? I only had eight milliliters. Do you see how nice that was? I just recorded it on a different piece of paper. And now I can easily put in my results. The flat lid, I had zero milliliters. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, the next row is you're subtracting. This is just simple subtraction. 20 minus 18, so how much water actually evaporated? Two milliliters. In this one, four milliliters, I'm just subtracting. This one, 12 milliliters. And this one, 20 full milliliters evaporated. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rank them. Which one had the most evaporation to the least amount of evaporation? And I don't know, this just kind of worked out for me, but it's literally like, this one had the most, the flat lid. The dome lead, lid had the second most. The beaker had the third most. And then the cylinder had the least amount. Now again, if you look at these, as we looked at them before and I showed you, we are looking at how surface area affects the rate of evaporation. If you remember, I said that the larger the surface area, so over here, the largest, the, the larger the surface area, the more evaporation will happen because it is laid out and more of the water is exposed to the air, okay? More of it is exposed. So you'll notice this one was gone. This one had the next most evaporation and this one also had a larger surface area than the beaker, and the beaker has a larger opening. It's not by the bottom, it's the opening, and then compare it to this small opening, which had the least amount. And this is a narrow tube, so it was all bunched up on top of each other, making it harder for those water molecules to escape into the air. Okay, so we did that. Now, now you need to fill out this slide, which says in which container did the most water evaporate? Well, for me, I would put the flat lid, okay? The flat lid, and for the second question, explain why the most water evaporated in that container. Now, I'm not gonna write my answer here. I've already explained this. You need to put it into your own words. Remember, the larger the surface area, the more the water is exposed to the air. So you need to somehow write that up and put that into your own words. It allows more water to touch the air and evaporate into the air, to escape into the air. It's more spread out, okay? After you do that, you're going to read the next three slides and answer these questions about water vapor. Um, and this kind of goes back to the water demonstration that we did. All right, uh, please don't throw away. Do not throw any of this away. I want you to take all of these materials. Um, if your Dixie cup got soggy and it's not really working, you can get rid of that. Um, you don't need the evaporation placemat. You do need the syringe. You can get rid of the extra water, but all of these things need to go back into this baggie that had your rock salt in it, okay? So put all of this back in here because we're going to use these materials again.